everybody. I want to start getting some of these videos of the activities out so you can see how easy they are. This is going to be a little paper model of a canoe. And the lines that we have on this page are dots, solid lines, and we have some dash lines. So I always include the instructions on the side in English words. Um, I also have them translated into some other languages, but for the purpose of this, the English words are on the page, trace the dotted lines, color the entire page with wax crayon to make your paper boat water resistant, cut on the solid lines, fold over the dashed lines, and glue the matching shapes together. So what do I mean by that? Well, we have these dotted lines, so I'm going to take some waxy crayon in whatever my favorite color for this will be, and whoop! <laughs> Crayons can be fun. And I'm going to trace down my dots, and when the kids are tracing, you can encourage them to sense how they connect their wrist to their arm in the movement. Some movements will be really small, right? Where they'll just be making little wrist hand movements. Some movements will be large where they're really connecting to their whole arm. And the same goes for whenever they're coloring in. Sometimes it'll be small spaces and sometimes you'll really wanna see them try to get more movement in long, long strokes of the crayon or the paintbrush or the marker, whatever they're using. In this, I specified crayons because of the wax barrier, because you can then have them take this and put it in a sink full of water or something. And they like to see how the paper won't accept the water, right? That the wax barrier is there. And then I get to tell them about how oils are used on woods to also create different water barriers and it kind of becomes another lesson in itself. So we're going to color this whole thing in wax and then they can get as fun and creative with the designs they put on this as they feel. I love to see when they really get into making this, this structure for themselves, right? They're going to they're going to launch someone in this little canoe, make a little paper person that can sit there and maybe they'll make some little canoe oars to paddle down their imaginary river with out of the extra paper that's on the page. And whee! The nice part about having them color these before they cut them is that they then can really be free with the edges and go straight over that cutting edge. And that'll make for a nice finish at the end. Okay, and on this, again, we're gonna wanna water test it. So let's go ahead and make a crazy color all over this in the back. And like I said, because we know we're gonna cut it out and we're just gonna make this entire side wax covered, we can use really big broad strokes. We don't have to worry about going, staying in the line, going outside of the line. This is about getting them to see how, for instance, much color they can put on the page, right? How, how much color can I get on the page in one stroke? So maybe you'll see them turn their crayon. Maybe you'll see them go kind of frantically with little strokes. They can play with mixing colors in this way until they get Whatever they desire does not have to be anything like what they might think it would look like in real life. Okay, so once I have adequately colored, <laughs> I am now going to move on to the cutting stage. 
So I'm gonna cut solid lines, not the solid lines that I drew, but the solid lines that were printed on the page, right? So I'm gonna find where that solid line meets the edge of the page and I'm going to cut along that solid line wherever it leads me. Down there and turn the page. And this is where kids are still learning to kind of control the page, to twist it so that it, they're more comfortable, turn it around, shift where their scissor is placed all of these little lessons in managing the materials and really managing, managing their hands. So this works their visual perception because they're trying to still pick out which line are they following. It works their fine motor skills, of course, because they're having to really control their paper in this hand and how they're maneuvering it, but mainly the scissors and how fast and how far they cut. And if they make a mistake, there's plenty of paper to make paper tape with and correct their mistake. I will show you again how to make paper tape, maybe just in a separate video, because that might be fun for kids to see. I always like the reaction I get when I ask a kid, do you know how to make paper tape? And, and they love to see that they can, they can make their own tape. They don't need a tape dispenser. Okay, <clears throat> pardon me. This is all cut out. And now I'm going to look around it, make sure there's no more solid line to cut. And in this case, there's not. And then I'm going to look for my dash lines. So dash lines are for folding over. So I see a dash line, I fold, I crease, and I can let it go. Dash line, fold over it crease and let it go. Dash line, fold over it, crease and let it go. And I can open it up to get that piece out of my way so that it's laying flat while I crease other lines. There we go. Now this one and this one. Now when I think I've creased every one of them, I'm going to look around, see if I can find any other creases. Nope, no other crease lines. So I get to go on to my gluing. Now for gluing, I'm going to match these little dark shapes. So I have solid black shapes, all sorts of different shapes. And for every shape, there is a match. So I'm looking for these little starbursts, for instance. I'll say, okay, I see this one, where's its match? There it is. And so I'll put my glue stick glue preferably. Otherwise, totally use Elmer's. I'll put plenty of glue, especially this one, which has all the wax over it. And I will match those together. Pinch it a little bit. Now I'm faced with this circle. Where's its buddy? Its buddy is right here. Okay, we're gonna put some glue on it and stick these guys together. All right, I don't see any more shapes on that end. So now let's come down here. I see a star. There's the other star. And this long oval. There's the other long oval. This one is a really quick and easy, but so much fun activity because once they get to this point and they see that they have their little waxy canoe, they can go try to float it. They can use this extra paper to make different things to go inside of it. I mean, I've seen kids make little lakes with another piece of paper and, and you know, practice their, uh, uh, I don't know, their, their boat navigation skills. I hope you guys have a lot of fun with this one. It will be up online tomorrow. And um, depending on when you're watching that video, that may be a long time from, or, you know, a long time ago. Anyway, uh, have a lot of fun with this and we will see you on the next video.